Hi guys, so welcome to Radius the channel. Our channel is about simplifying success principles and making them available so the average individual could carve out their own version of success. The means by which we get content for the channel is that we ask you questions and we attempt to answer the questions with our videos. Today's concern, our, our viewer raised the point that he has been in a relationship for a while, for a very long time, and the relationship has gotten extremely stale. He attempted to use adrenaline, the event, as a means of bringing excitement back into his relationship, and he, in his words, it backfired. And he wants any suggestion that we could offer that would assist him in bringing his relationship back to some sem semblance of life. So that's what we'll try to tackle in today's video. Now, first of all, we, let me talk about adrenaline for a bit. We talked in a previous video, if you haven't seen it, check out the video, The Shelf Life of Monogamy, or you can check out the video, Cheating versus Non-Monogamy. Good? We talked about an event called Adrenaline, and Adrenaline is an adult event or an adult game night that couples could use to bring excitement back into their relationship. We talked about three phases of a romantic relationship, lust, attraction, and attachment. When you reach the attachment phase, you tend to not be as excited as you used to be in terms of um, that sexual component of your relationship. And adrenaline is an event that couples use to get that excitement back within their relationship. But adrenaline is not the answer to everything. If your relationship is still for different reasons, adrenaline may not necessarily be the answer or any event of that nature may not necessarily be the answer. As a matter of fact, if there are several things wrong with your relationship and you use the means that we suggested in the consensual non-monogamy video, if you use those means, it can actually make things worse. So, what he suggested is that his partner is only excited when it's close to adrenaline the event. She's only excited about the event. And if there are any suggestions we could give to bring his relationship back to life. Now, I want to share with you, my audience today, an approach that is used in organizational development to bring an organization back to life, to get an organization back to functioning the way it, it needs to. I'm gonna bring that kind of um, assessment or evaluation to, towards your romantic relationship and share with you a means by which you could get your relationship back on track. The system is called Appreciative Inquiry. And we're gonna do that with your relationship. I'm gonna use the board to, to help me make the point. So we have the board here. And let's, I hope you guys hear me. Hope you guys see me. So Appreciative Inquiry talks about five Ds. D number one, D number two, D number three, number four, number five. The first D is to either define or determine the area of your relationship you want to pay attention to. So you're going to define an area of your relationship you want to pay attention to. You're going to determine an area of your relationship that you want to pay attention to. Let's just say we're looking for excitement, so we're talking about things that both of us can do together. The next D talks about discover. So it's a discovery phase. And what you do, you go back in time when your relationship was good, when your relationship was exciting, and you try to discover what was happening in your relationship at that time that caused your relationship to be exciting. And you develop stories based on your discoveries. So what stories you could tell, so you could say, so remember back then, back at that point when we used to do X, Y, or Z, so you develop stories based on what you discover that made your relationship fun. And the third D talks about dream. So you now have a vision of how you want your relationship to improve based on what went well at that point, based on the stories you would have told yourself, you now create a vision or the dream 
that you now want your relationship to be about, the ways you want your relationship to improve. So you identify the area, you discover the stories, what worked well, you create the dream or the vision of how you want your relationship to be. And this D, you guessed it, is you design. You design those activities or those strategies or those actions that you can take to achieve the dream based on the way things work in the specific area that you pay, you're paying attention to. So you design those activities and then, of course, you deliver on these activities or you deploy the strategies that you came up with. So you're now, you're now taking action consistent with your design to bring your relationship to what you want it to be. But both parties must be willing to take the actions that will cause their relationship to improve. It's not just one person must be interested. Both parties must be interested. Now, we added a 6D. And this D is discipline. So when you identify those things that you need to do, when you identify those things that you need to do to bring your relationship to the level that you would like your relationship to be at, you need to have the discipline to do these things, the discipline to follow through with these things. And discipline is, is, is about knowing what you have to do and doing what you have to do whether or not you feel like it. Because you believe it would make sense in your relationship, things can improve in your relationship, discipline is important. Whether or not you feel like it, whether or not you're in the mood, whether or not it's easy, whether or not it's convenient, you have made a decision that you want to improve your relationship. Both parties must be interested in improving their relationship. Now, once you identify the actions that you must be taking and you're taking the kinds of actions that you should be taking with discipline. And so there's another principle that I want to share with you as well. It's called the ad car model. A D K A R. The ad car model. And the ad car model, for most of us, we know when we want things to improve in our relationship, we are aware of what is not going right. We are aware of what is going wrong. And it's frustrating that you are aware of what is going wrong. You are aware of not, what is not going right, but you're not aware what to do to improve it. Now, the D here is we must have a desire. So, not only must you be aware of what is going wrong, you must have a desire to improve things, a desire to fix things. Both of you must have that desire. So you are aware and you're frustrated because you're aware. You have the desire, but you also need knowledge. You need the knowledge of what to do. Now, the area of concern that was shared by the, by the subscriber is that their um, bedroom life is, is dull and boring and it's only when they go to adrenaline that they have fun. Now, one of the things with, with us men in general, we don't like to hear that we are not as good as we think we are in the bedroom. We don't like to hear that we may not be as in a position to satisfy our partners as we would want to believe that we are. And then because of that, our partners may not necessarily want to tell us that. As a matter of fact, the research pointed out that 62% of females indicated that they would never tell their partners that something is going wrong in the bedroom. 62% of females said that. And some of them even went on to say that sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's bad. That's just the way it is. But we need to know, there are certain things that we need to know about our bedroom behavior that can improve things for us and make our relationships more satisfying for both our partners and ourselves. For most of us, we learned about sexual behavior or sexual activity as a teenager. Maybe we were 14, 15, 16, maybe we were in school um, and we just experimented with these urges that we received from our bodies. Our parents never really taught us about sex. The school didn't really teach us about having sex. There's, there's no way you could go to learn about having sex per se back then, unless of course you looked at porn, which is one of the worst places to learn about having sex because you, you end up being um, mentally deficient in terms of knowing what's right, what's wrong, what's sensible, what's senseless. So, 
now we don't have that situation there are lots of resources on youtube on the internet that you could get there are lots of books that you could get the right knowledge in a previous video we shared right of consensual and monogamy i shared with you some resources i think i shared caitlin b on youtube i also shared jason julius i also shared well there's gabriel Moore as well so we could have the knowledge we could get the knowledge so we are aware that we're doing something wrong we have a desire to fix it now we have the information and of course this a is the ability so this is the ability to improve and how do you get the ability to improve because you have the knowledge and you try something and then from what you try you observe you pay attention you listen you communicate and you keep improving until you refine your ability you develop your ability to be more satisfied in your relationship so both you and your partner and then this area is actually reinforcement so you have putting these structures in place to ensure that your relationship continues to be good now adrenaline the event is a means of reinforcing your desire to increase excitement within your relationships but it's for that purpose and that purpose only if your relationship is having issues and those issues cannot be treated with with an event like adrenaline or something of that nature then adrenaline will only serve to frustrate you more so why am i sharing that i'm sharing that because i talked about adrenaline in previous videos and persons responded by saying it actually backfired so i hope this video was useful to let you know that maybe adrenaline was not necessarily the only solution you should be experimenting with you should actually go back in time and discover what worked well in your relationship create a collective vision both both of you decide on what you want to do both of you decide on those things that you're going to do to improve your relationship start taking action and maintain the discipline such that you are consistently taking those kinds of actions based on the knowledge that you're acquiring the ability that you're developing and those structures that you're putting in place to keep it sustainable so that brings us to the end of this video if you're getting value from this video please subscribe subscribing will make it easy for us in terms of marketing the channel if you subscribe you'll get all videos in your feed when you turn on your youtube channel if you like what you got click the like button of course leave a comment if you feel like and share with others see you in the next video